Hello, I'm Denise Govitz, Senior Trainer at EDIS Learning. I'm here today to show you our interactive LCD panels and the software that comes with it called Interwrite. Just some features of the LCD panels. They come in two sizes. The one behind me is a 65 inch. They also come in a 55 inch. They're available on a mobile stand, which is movable. They're also available on a kindy trolley. And also, they can be wall mounted. The wall mounted ones can have gas struts, which will allow them to move up and down. And we can also provide you with concertina brackets, which will allow them to be brought out from the wall. This is ideal for special education students in wheelchairs, or if you have a cupboard that's in the way. They are multi-touch, and they can be activated either with a finger or with a stylus. They use infrared technology. They have 100,000 hours plus lifespan. The main advantage of the LCD panels over data projectors is the fact that you don't have the glare or the shadows that you get with data projectors. Also, you don't have the replacement costs of globes and also of repair of filters. There's no calibration required. They will work with both Windows and Mac, and they can be used with a computer or if you have a TV aerial, they can be used as a TV as well. I'm just going to move this one down so that I have easy access to it. It's just a matter of unscrewing the knobs at the back and pulling the panel down. So that it's at a height that's suitable for you to use. I'm going to show you the EDIS Interwrite software that comes with the LCD panel. Um, it's both Windows and Mac compatible. Uh, the, it's an unlimited site license, so both teachers and students can have access to the software. The software itself can be used with existing documents, such as a Word document. You'll see that up at the top, when I'm connected to the LCD panel, I have access to ink tools and pens. If I want to, I can select a highlighter and highlight various things on the screen. I can use a pen and select a different color to actually circle things and write whatever information I want. The document is live, so if I need to, I can actually move it to another uh, area and the markings still stay on the screen. When you want to finish and close this document, I would save it as another document, so you still have your original, but you've also got the one that you've annotated as well. The most basic thing you want to do is to write on the screen. When you're in window mode, you get a blank screen that you can write on. If you look at the icon here, it's also down on the toolbar. You're able to select the pen that you want, and then it's simply a matter of writing on the screen. When you want to shift that around or make it larger or smaller, you need to select the icon called Select Object, and that allows you to tap on the image itself, and then you're able to move it anywhere that you want. You're able to make it larger or smaller, and using the green circle, you can also rotate it if you want to. While it's highlighted, if you need to, you can change the color by going to the color box, and you can also change the line thickness. Another advantage of the interactive LCD panel is that you are able to replay pages. So everything that I've just done on this page, I can replay. And that's this symbol that you see here, which is located there on the screen. I can pause this. There's a little pause button here. And then play it as fast or as slow as I want. But all the motions that I put onto the screen will appear. So this is uh, quite handy if um, you want to replay the formation of letters or if you teach foreign languages, the formation of different characters like Japanese or Chinese. Or if you've got a math equation where you want to pause it at certain points and get the students to predict what the next step will be. You also have the ability to create shapes uh, using geometric recognition. That's this symbol that's here. And it's just a matter of drawing the shape free form on the screen, and it will automatically format that for you. You've also got handwriting recognition. If you go to the word draw, 
and so obtain writing recognition, you're able to then write on the screen and it will format that into type text for you. You're able to select from Comic Sans Aerial or any of the Queensland or Foundation sort of fonts. You can also select a variety of set shapes. That's these here. It's just a matter of selecting the one that you want to use. You can then go to the color box if you wish and select the outline color and then go back and select the fill and this will allow you to drag that shape onto the screen. If you need to move this or change it in any way, you do have these white squares which will allow you to alter the actual shape of the object itself. You can go to the down arrow and you can rotate things, say in this case 45 degrees. I can go to the edit point and go to flip and I can flip that horizontally if I wish. I can mirror it horizontally as well. So it gives you a few options with uh, shapes. You've also got the ability to lock shapes into place. So if you want to keep it there, you can hit the down arrow and lock it. It now cannot be moved. This one can be moved around. So you can uh, use that for diagrams and things that you don't want the students to move around the screen. Typing text. To type on the screen, initially if you're standing at the LCD panel, you should bring up under tools the soft keyboard and then go to the double T's that you see here and select any of the fonts, any font that's installed on your computer you'll be able to use. I'm just going to select this one and I'll just tap on the screen. As long as there's a cursor flashing there, I can just treat this as a normal sort of keyboard. And tip tap my way through. If you're standing here at your keyboard, you can also just type straight from the keyboard itself. Once again, if I use select object, I can then click and move this anywhere that I want on the screen. If you need to highlight text, your highlighters are here. It's just a matter of selecting with the word that you want to highlight. If you want to, you can use the eraser to erase the highlighting. Um, the eraser won't erase the typed text, the only way you can get rid of it is to tap on it and hit the red X that's there and that will make it disappear. Adding illustrations, you have a resource tab here on the side and there's two galleries. One's called the public gallery and that's all the free clip art that comes with the LCD panel. The other one is called the guest gallery and this is where my library is located. My library will allow you to actually select and uh, install any clip art or photos or images that you want to uh, into the gallery that you can then use at a later time. I'm just going to go to public gallery and education. Education has all the main key learning areas. I'm going to select science and animals and sky and I'm going to bring this B over to the main screen. If I want to, I can tap on him. He's rather large, so I can make him a bit smaller. I can go to the down arrow. I can clone him, so now I have two of the exact same thing. I can flip him horizontally. I can mirror him horizontally as well. So I end up with three that I can click and drag over to the image that's here. When you put any images on the screen, the very first image you put is the bottom layer, and everything else gets added on top. The butterfly was the first thing I added, so now it's being hidden by that image. To bring it to the top, I just go to the down arrow, go to graphic layer, and make it the top layer, and now it will easily float over that top. If I wanted to, I could group that image together by using select object, and just dragging a box over the images that I wanted to group, go to any of those down arrows, and go to the word group, and group again, and now that's one whole thing. Once again, something like this can be saved into your library for later use. Uses of um, graphic layering. With this instance here, if a number is a factor of 21, it will sit on top. So it's a top layer. If it isn't, it will be hidden underneath. The same thing with this diagram. This particular diagram is in the biology section of science. And you can actually use shapes to cover up the words and reveal them underneath. This one here is a self-correcting exercise as well. If the answer is correct, the students will see a happy face. If it isn't, they'll see an unhappy face. So 
so we'll know which one is correct. Another great way to use it is as an attendance sheet so that your students can actually come up, identify themselves, and drag their picture into the I'm here category. You can also create a series of lines and actually save these as pages and then bring them out as you need them and write uh, as you see here on the screen. You can also label diagrams by just simply using the arrowheads that are there and then selecting the words and clicking and dragging them into the correct spot. With other tools that are available, you do have a magnifying glass, which is this one here. Just drag a small box over the screen, and that magnifies not only that, but also everything else that you see here on the screen. If you want to, you can also use the word view, and go to zoom, and bring it up to 150%. And if I wanted to, I could, say, trace a, a bus route. And then when I go back to view, we'll zoom and bring it back to that 100%, you'll see that those lines stay where I actually put them to begin with. What I'm able to do now, if I wanted to, is capture that section, crop that section using the camera. There's the camera. The first icon is the cropping and I'm able to just crop that photo. When I get it to the size I want, I just tap on the screen, and you see that here is the image that I just captured. So once again, something like this could be dragged into your library and saved for future reference. You also have the screen shade. The screen shade will enable you to reveal as much or as little of the screen as you want. You can actually pull it in from either side. And this can be customized with whatever photo you wish uh, to use. Another tool is the search light. The search light will allow you to highlight various parts of the screen. You can change the flare shape if you wish. And you can also change the transparency to make it completely dark. There are a number of mass tools. You've got compasses, set squares, rulers, protractors. And also in the toolbox, there is the calculator. The calculator can be uh, used. This is the statistics one, but you've also got the standard one. You've got the scientific one and the program as well. Another interesting thing, you've got unit conversions. If you want to convert centigrade to Fahrenheit, you'll be able to do that fairly easily. And uh, also date calculations, if you want to know how many days it is till that particular date, will actually tell you. So that's the calculator. Along with the calculator, you also have the um, digital clock. The digital clock can be used as just a normal clock with date and time, but you can also change it to a countdown clock or change it to a timing clock to time how long it's taking students to do an exercise. In addition to that, you also have the ability to add external tools, things like digital cameras or um, digital microscopes, or there's one uh, feature called the screen recorder. And what this allows you to do is actually record both audio and visual um, things that happen on this particular screen. So you could use that as a, a lesson for students or students that have missed a class. Built into the software, you do have a help guide. The help guide will give you both written and visual instructions on how to use the various features and tools found in the software. In addition, on our website, we do have a number, 11 tutorials, uh, based on the different types of interactive products that we have. Uh, this will enable you to listen to me and talk I'll talk you through uh, using the various tools and features. Thank you for viewing this demonstration. If you've got further information, please contact us at info at or at our free call number.